everyone this is sonali thank you all for carving out some time for attending today's webinar on the episode 17th of the business x learning series invest scale value and exit uh, today's topic is on planning a successful business exit unlocking and monetizing value to all the attendees out there please type in any questions you might have in the q and a section and we'll try to answer as many as possible at the end of the session I would now like to welcome our speaker, Mr. Gaurav Maria, Chairman and Founder of the Franchise India Group. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Sonali, and thank you for hosting this uh, every week uh, session. Uh, Business X is a platform of Franchise India which works on helping businesses, especially small and mid-sized businesses, uh, to run, raise capital, value themselves, and also help them to exit. We are the largest marketplace for helping businesses to find new buyers. so we are in a very interesting time you know uh, and i i have started seeing uh, last 4 5 months we had a lot of uh, 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 you know uh, problems in the economy businesses was collapsing and things of that nature and now it started coming back and lot of uh, businesses are coming back a lot of uh, new potential uh, buyers are coming back in the market and we are starting seeing a lot of transactions happening on one side we are seeing uh, companies which are becoming more opportunist they are looking for acquisition of businesses which are strategically or financially attractive for them and on the other side we also looking at businesses which are now looking to use and it's not really about the businesses which have uh, some kind of a stress in, in their business uh, we are seeing rather a lot of businesses which are doing extremely well they are using this as an opportunity because a lot of people are out there who are also looking to successful running businesses rather than starting their own startup now which has a lot of uncertainty but it is better to invest into businesses which are already established so it's a good time and i see particularly in 2021 2022 would be one of the biggest times for uh, mnas and we would see a lot of action going on in the mid market mna and that's where the space where business x really works on because fundamentally there is a lot of work i mean a lot of big uh, consulting firms actually focus on the top mna opportunities but nobody is doing it at entry or a mid, mid level uh, mna and that's where our focus really is so <clears throat> today we're going to talk about how you really plan your uh, exit structure you know it's always planned you know it's not really uh, you can obviously sometimes be opportunist and look at uh, something comes to your way i mean i just finished a call with the with the uh, group out of chennai and and uh, we proposed a, a healthcare practice run by a doctor and we just reached out to him and say we have a buyer if you would be interested do that and he says why not why should i not look at it right so at a given point in time people are always open i always say that one third of businesses if given a choice would exit not necessarily they need cash or then i think there must be some other reason they want to pursue this might be fatigue which has come in so today we are what we want to talk about is why you want to sell the business uh, when you want to sell the business how you want to sell the business and where uh, what are you going to sell them you know it also very important that we need to understand Uh, what is the real inherent value in your business model which you really want to bring it out and sell the uh, business to somebody else so i would say that uh, <clears throat> it is actually unlocking your equity into real cash so always in the back of the mind we know our value of businesses a lot of people don't go through the whole exercise of uh, hiring a good valuation consultant and and getting that done it's a very big recommendation i would say uh, india has a big problem we don't have we have less than 1% of businesses valued so people run their businesses all their life they spend what 60 70% of their uh, active life into their businesses but they don't know the value they know the value of their house they know the value of their car they drive they know the value of their watch they wear everything they know value but sometimes when they run the business they don't have a value and this is true with almost all businesses and i go to them and they have very vague idea about what is the right value for the businesses so one of the strong recommendations i do for small businesses is that always periodically keep noting your value and see uh, how your value is been built and if you really want to sell that it will come handy to you but let's talk about few questions which is very important for you to really go through when is the right time to exit and what are the typical signals which you will tend uh, when you need to do that i personally feel that a best time for selling a business you know this is like a you know s curve kind of thing you don't know where you are and when you go down and you kind of come up whenever you have a early signal which has started showing that you are back on the curve and the company is back on the growth side that is a probably a best time to really look at uh, growth because you are able to demonstrate people are not buying what you've done people are buying what they can do with your business in next 5 10 years that's where the value is so if you can really demonstrate next 4 5 7 10 years of your business in showing that this business is going in 
that is the time you really have to be the best time to really look at a uh, selling a business there are also some other compulsions come in you know where which are which are forced upon you it can be non performance of business uh, cash flow issues it can be fatigue it can be succession issues a lot of issues come in where people think that this is this is the time uh, they want to do that now these are days a lot of cases we are getting is where good business but it's prolonged uh, uh, issues of this period which has gone to about 6 7 months now where businesses are not doing well this prolonged period have actually dried cash flows a lot of people i don't have enough cash flows to restart or regrow or recapitalize their businesses businesses are great but they don't have that kind of capital or they have too many assets which means that i'm talking to a a restaurant operator which runs about 25 different restaurants and now to really bring all 25 back in order he needs a lot of cash to be done so he's decided he'll sell some part of it some part of that business he will sell it to somebody else uh, so that he can really do that while in some cases uh, you can really sell the asset and retain still retain the brand name which is through what i call the conversion franchise you convert the business into a franchise sell that something which we call the built operate transfer which you sell the your running businesses to somebody as a franchise and still retain the brand and still retain the customer base so a lot of other structures are available in the market so to bring the liquidity back so what is the best time so time is you need to really decide at what stage you are in and if you feel that the window is too short and you don't see uh, the business uh, you will be able to retain or survive over 4 or 5 months then you need to really start planning right away i feel that a lot of people come to us when they are at a point where they don't have any ability to go forward and they're pretty much like a 30 day away from closure and that's the time they really start running around and finding a buyer and they don't get a buyer because 30 days is too low a time and you you not be able to do this whole exercise and and you actually lose the entire asset so be very see your predictability don't overestimate yourself and especially in these days don't overestimate yourself if you feel that you don't have that kind of window don't go too fast start planning your exit and we'll talk about what all you need to do that so then a lot of people say how do i exit how do i really get to the level and where i am able to find and i think so you need to really see where you are are you a performing asset if you are performing asset is financially making money you'll always get a good financial investor a uh, largely financial investors would like to invest into businesses which are performing and we'll talk about how the valuations would come in and we have done a lot of episodes in past where we talked about how you need to value the businesses uh, and what kind of uh, parameters you need to use but if you are non performing then you have to really look at somebody who's strategic who is able to really turn around the asset and that's the more difficult part of it right you, you know if you are say at this stage not financially performing and who would have that ability to take the business and i've seen the businesses are sold in many frames look at the technology view point there are three stages i've seen uh, businesses are bought stage 1 where you are early and you have some kind of a proprietary technology which you built in or you have a interesting talent uh, you would normally bought people would buy that part of the business right so they would quickly buy the business because they want to get that a uh, breaking technology or uh, some kind of that thing a lot of uh, acquisition at early stage happens purely from a talent and the technology which you build in which is very early stage which i call people buy innovation they they feel that the uh, you know if they have to pass through this whole innovation there would be a, a gestation and uh, companies don't want to lose gestation especially on breaking technologies uh, they would like to pick up these and i think so innovation would always play and this plays in other businesses also even consumer side anything anything which you have done a strong innovation and there is somebody who has ability to pick up that innovation they would just pick up that innovation and buy that and that then you get into a little bit of maturity of a product so if your product has gone to a mature the company would come down this is like mid size businesses and then you have a full blown company which has a strong balance sheet then you acquire that so you need to really see where you are if you are early stage company with a strong innovation there is somebody who needs that innovation from you and there would be somebody who has a compelling reason if you have a strong mature product or a consumer base which is built in there is somebody who wants to do go to market and enter that space and would have to acquire you and when you are really a performing large company with a reasonable size balance sheet then company people would like to completely acquire that business so one has to really see uh, what stage you are in then we get on to what is the typical challenges of exit exit are multiple challenges can come in in most of the challenges i've realized is is the expectation expectation on both sides is expectation sometimes is not very real uh, the expectation from a buyer or a seller uh, you know and these days this is is unrealistic going on you know most of the buyers think that they they buying peanuts right almost every time they they mentally uh, expectation is 
that they want to buy businesses which are coming at a very very big haircut on the other side the sellers are uh, not in that mood to do it so there is a big problem there while the demand side and and the, is is very high we are seeing a lot of cases coming to us but transactions are slow because of this mismatch of expectation so i am not picking up cases because i i always say that if you don't have especially on a seller side uh, at this stage he has to have a certain amount of expectation alignment because the the, uh, the the most of the buyers are becoming more and more opportunist you know we have seen deals they will go back and renegotiate and renegotiate because their 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 expectation is very unreal and i feel that mature buyers also have to understand that that uh, you you don't get uh, businesses that uh, that kind of and i think you need to have a realistic offer to really take businesses at the right time so how do you really uh, execute the right strategy and strategies which can scale uh, and achieve your exit goal which means that sometimes uh, uh, there is a companies which are not ready for immediate sale point they need to go to a certain amount of size before they can even trigger this in life so you need to if you really look at a, a good companies which are designed for exit or raising capital uh, they would set some benchmarks uh, at what stage they would be ready to do that and this is needs a little bit of faster scalability but very consciously you just cannot scale just for sake of designing a business or what i call dressing the business it doesn't work because eventually it will it will collapse and will create greater problems but you need to consciously design that how do you next 2 to 3 years show the significant growth i think because the last 2 to 3 years of your your business performance would determine the most part of your valuation and that's very very important if you're really able to uh, show through that next 6 months or one year traction how you are able to do that it builds a lot of confidence in the new buyer uh, uh, it needs to be done another myth is that not every business can sell uh, i can tell you every business can sell every business has a inherent value uh, and how you present that inherent value uh, to a business we call the saas principle that what is the strategic value asset value and the subscriber value so that human has to really determine and then you need to present uh, to somebody uh, who needs to do that another a lot of uh, other integrities are there how do you really transfer the business what is the kind of structures you need to do that should the only business be transferred or the complete company is transferred uh, what is the you know a uh, right fair valuation structure who can be eligible doing valuation we'll talk about all those issues we'll also talk about a lot of uh, mistakes uh, people have done in doing uh, these valuations a lot of times uh, uh, i feel that uh, the sellers who want to really sell the business some somebody who's coming in and diluting that he uh, or she has uh, real i mean uh, business is a little bit confused and i when i we go deeper into the businesses they they have a lot of other ancillary things which are packaged around business which doesn't make any sense and and the good buyers would start taking them out and the business they would like to take the core part of the business and uh, and that sometimes becomes changes the huge amount of valuation structures so people really put a lot of thing when you building your own business you really bring in a lot of other things which are actually looking good to you but from an outside maybe you have a nice beautiful corporate office and a lot of other issues which you really value which are uh, part of your existence because it was your existence in your your own persona your own in the i think but it has no meaning for a new buyer buyer is actually little detached and this is one of the areas sound when you build a business from scratch and you building this entire thing you're emotionally uh, committed to the business you're emotionally involved in the business every smallest thing you have really done for it but actually when the new buyer comes in he's not he's only interested in the business part of it it has no emotional angle in diving so a lot of things which would look valuable to you as a seller would not look so much for the a new buyer a new buyer would not not like to have that i have seen people have really bought businesses close the corporate offices taken to smaller places integrate facilities or uh, clean up a lot of people a lot of team members are there which are old in the system which you will shy away and they would come and cut those uh, cost out so a lot of these changes are 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 part of that and i also feel that sometimes in a buying cycle uh, cultures don't match and that also is a big mistake and i've seen businesses uh, the other rajiv companies also have run big mistakes where one of their or two acquisitions for them have actually been not so great because culturally they were never able to integrate themselves and and businesses become very very difficult but what all you have to prepare before you get into uh, any kind of a, a sell out you need to prepare one your strong financial statements you know you need to have a very clean balance sheet if you don't have a very clean balance sheet first work on 5 to 6 months to make sure that your your uh, balance sheet is very clearly defined your profit and loss statements your your cash flow statements your tax returns 
are completely compliant, your additional financial support for your financial uh, representation, your uh, leases or contracts which you have done, your supplier and vendor contracts, uh, how they are placed and how strong they are and how well defined they are, your certificates, your IPs, your trademarks, everything is very important. Even any kind of litigations, any kind of uh, uh, cases which are filed in the entire thing. I've seen in past last stages of the when the DD really starts, even a small case would become a very big point of uh, issues because uh, uh, liability side is the most worry part for any new buyer because the buyer really gets scared that what is coming with this, which I'm not able to see. Their anxiety is only about that. If you present that anxiety in a proper sense, which doesn't come out in DD, uh, then it's fine. But in the DD, if it comes out, even the smallest thing which was not told, it looks very big at that time because then they think that there might be more which can come through, which is not being told. You know, so any kind of uh, personal withdrawals all has to be divided and uh, uh, presented very well because a lot of time when entrepreneurs and business owners run there, they have a lot of their personal withdrawals which they have done in the business. All that is very, very important. And also to demonstrate your uh, some kind of a leadership team. Now, the next question would really come down to a point. Uh, and another thing which I always say in the most valuable businesses are where the business owner is himself has become redundant. You know, so uh, if you really represent yourself too much and say, oh, this is all around me because I build the business and I'm doing the entire thing actually is negative for your business valuation. Fundamentally, because it looks like that when you take him out, like just now I was doing the call with, with the one a buyer seller and I, I thought buyer did the right question. He said, uh, if I even buy you business uh, right now, because you're a doctor, whenever you go and practice somewhere else, you will take your client there. And it was a very valid point. You know, it's a very valid point because the doctor was integral. So how do you really invest into businesses like that where there is a larger chance that the entire consumer base can move with a, with a new owner or uh, with, a, with the older owner uh, and, and the, uh, the business is lost. So these are things which get comfort. It needs to show a very strong comfort. And this cannot be just verbal assurances or or a non-compete for a two years or three years would give that assurance. We've seen businesses which is like that. I mean, I'll give you an example. One of the classic wastage of a good company was a company called Sagaratna. Sagaratna, great business, built very well, franchise business. We worked with them uh, very closely for long years and it was invested by a good private equity firm. They bought all the business, the mistake private equity firms do that they take controlling stakes and they take controlling stakes. They put their own CEO, started running the business and here, the gentleman who founded Sagaratna started another company uh, by uh, somebody else's name while he was still in a non-compete, Sri Ratnam, and he started opening up businesses next to Sagaratna. Now, this got into a major fight. It had legal issues. It had multiple other issues. Eventually, that business started uh, losing money because now you created your own competition and you started telling the value of the entire thing. While there was not a complete exit, so just uh, Sagaratna was still a partial part of it. And eventually what happened, then they, they would really uh, come back and, and start investing. So this is what, so they, they actually transferred back the business to the owner, original owner. Now I'm not saying it's a strategy, the business strategy, that's their call. But I feel that uh, one has to really clearly define uh, where the obligation of both buyer and seller was set. Because eventually any kind of dispute which happens either for anybody's reason, I don't know, I don't know, I have no authority to really say, whose mistake was here in that thing. But I know that because of this whole issue, businesses of Sagaratna, which was a great company suffered. And now obviously they are trying to revive and bring the business back, hopefully it does. But that's where the some of the uh, wrong m and deals would go. So one has to really be very, very conscious that how do you really structure these deals? Uh, these deals are very, very sensitive and more you confidence you give and uh, to, the, to the new buyer that you, you are cooperating in this transfer and handholding of business and and rather you are no more important in that business business is so professionally run that it can be taken over by a new management very easily that gives a great comfort and that's where these are sometimes international organizations uh, are very well designed where their their ownership is not so much locked in so they very professionally designed business and business can be easily transferred to a new buyer another thing which you need to do is how do you really uh, value your business and and uh, uh, what what kind of uh, estimate you would put for your business model. Uh, so you need to really see which time you are in. Is it a time which is very bullish? We are not in that time. We, we are we passing through pretty much a recession time. Liquidity is tight. 
So how do you really structure the deal would also make sure that how your valuation would be pegged at. While valuation would be very clearly what I call the art and the science of it. Science is more number driven. How do you really put up the numbers and future forecast of the business? Art is about how, how critically you present that business opportunity and what crit, uh, other IP or other than the numbers itself, the real inherent unlock value lies in the business. If we marry these two, then we present that would get you a maximum valuation. The, uh, I feel that you need to, uh, today you need to hire a certified evaluator, uh, valuation uh, professional who would be certified. Now government of India has uh, particularly uh, started a certification, uh, which is, which would be only certified evaluator uh, can be able to do your valuation. So you need to reach out to any of them. At BusinessX also, we have a team of valuation, which does it. We also have a, India's first FinTech product, actually is a global product called bizequity.com, where you can do, go and put your own numbers and actually get yourself valued uh, yourself. <clears throat> Another thing which you need to do is when, when you have the first, uh, you know, preparing yourself, which means that you do your financial statement structure, clean up, and you have the full uh, team ready, then you get into the valuation, get yourself valued uh, and uh, uh, get the right valuation in place. Then you start presenting, you need to package it all thing together, uh, which means that how do you, what I call in investment banking, dress the bride. How do you really dress it up? How do you really put, not dress for, not from a wrong reason. It's not that you are trying to put things which are not true. I'm saying, but still you need to create an aspiration in your asset. How do you really present that? We call it an information memorandum, go into deep into that. It should have a very detailed understanding because please try to understand the new buyer might not be so much understanding your market, your business, your structure, more in a very, very crisp form, you're able to do that. Sometimes people overdo it. They don't need to. You need to give a very strong, very sharp, but very clear understanding of the business, but very, very presented, very well presented. Uh, that, that's the third stage. Fourth is you need to really now start uh, going in and putting into the marketplaces, right? So you need to really go down to do that. The mistake again you do is you talk to a lot of people a lot of people and, and present different cases there. Uh, this is one of the areas which you should shy away, not to do that. Uh, use one or two marketplaces. Don't overput yourself. If you are selling a small business or a, a, even a, a, a mid-sized business, stick to that. Uh, don't over uh, uh, reveal your uh, communication. Don't put it all over. People use open forums. They put uh, social media and other places. Don't do that. It, it, it actually harm the business sales. You need to really do a very professional listing if you want to do that, if you want to directly attract or use a good advisor. That's my last point. You need to use a good advisor who on your behalf, maybe sometimes most of the times, like in business X case, we don't really, the uh, if we are having a mandate to sell, we would not uh, reveal the information about the seller. We always would keep it confidential. We will just go out and say, uh, running school in Delhi NCR or is available for sale. And these are the facts for the entire thing. So unless and until we really find out somebody is really serious, otherwise your competition, your other people, your even employees, a lot of people come to know and that actually damages the business. Your trade uh, people, your suppliers, actually suppliers is the biggest problem. You know, so when a supplier knows that you are ready to sell, you're selling the business, uh, they have credit running with you. They become very, very conscious giving you credit. So it impacts your current business also. So you have to be very conscious when you're doing a business transaction, use a good advisor. And this advisor should do everything confidentially and uh, not even, even go out and claim. Uh, once the transaction is successfully done, and if you allow, then they can go out and make a thing. Some people don't that allow also because they don't want to even tell uh, people that they have sold the business or things like that. So at Business X, we take a very strong uh, confidentiality as a very, very strong part of the transaction because most of the times, even if you go on, uh, franchise India or other things, we will not see a lot of assets which we would like to market or put in that. I think we will very, very be consciously doing it. And only and when if a client approves us that you can go and use our brand or something like that, we will go and present this opportunity. So this is where uh, exit would be. I think there is a, uh, particularly now, I think both sides are getting uh, out there. And this market is uh, what I call getting into full action. A lot of transactions I would see in next two quarters would start coming in. If you feel that you are on either side, which means that either you are a buyer or a seller, uh, please reach out to Business X and we will be more than happy uh, to really uh, take your discussion ahead and also uh, suggest you what is right and when do you want to, what kind of value you will get for your business and, and what kind of a buyer you should look at. 
So this is a, a 30 minute presentation from my side. I have another three minutes to go. If I have any questions, which Sonali, you want to pick it up, I'll be more than happy to take it. Sure. Thank you so much for another wonderful session, sir, and for sharing your great insights. Uh, we do have quite a few questions lined up with us. Our first question is from Mr. Karthik Sahu. He says, do you think I can sell an advertising agency which is four years old, uh, profit making 72 lakh rupees revenue, but a business which is completely dependent upon my goodwill with the clients? How can I exit from a service based business like that? So, uh, Karthik, very, very good question you have asked. Uh, we've sold actually multiple uh, advertising agencies and uh, accredited agency. If you are accredited, then there is an inherent value already because there, there is a value for that. Uh, while it's a uh, tough business now, very tough business, um, uh, both margins are eroding. The conventional advertising, which used to be done to agencies, is also changed quite a bit. I would say uh, uh, you, you should look at not a new, just a buyer. Uh, anybody can buy. You should look at somebody strategic. Maybe find out another agency which has uh, uh, not in your region and would like to look at not in region or not having the kind of clientele you have. So your book would become more strategic and also it can create a comfort for your clients because you're now being part of a, another big agency. So I, I feel uh, there would be another round of consolidation in this space. A lot of independent agencies would have to merge to create some, some business sense. And, uh, and uh, this, this is very doable. Uh, it's a very doable thing, uh, but uh, I would say more strategic than uh, just a financial investor at this moment. Uh, sure. So the next question we have is, will someone be interested in buying a business which is currently in losses but has good potential, so it will do good if it's put in the right hands? Very, very good question. And this question I get almost uh, five times a day. And uh, this question is about uh, how do you define good business? really you know first uh, we have to really visit that point if the business model is an early stage and uh, you're still in a what i call gestation or a product discovery or distribution discovery or cycle where you you are very close to where the business would start triggering and getting into the next height and things like that uh, then i would say it's a good business all startups scale up businesses are like that they're not making financial money they're losing but the direction is very clearly showing indication your cost of acquisition of customer is coming down. You are adding more customers. Customers are spending more. So, like we dot uh, e-commerce, what we used to say, cost of acquisition continues to show coming down. I was spending thousand rupees to get one customer, and now I'm spending five hundred to get one customer. It's a good sign. Second, my uh, overall consumption cycles are going on. People were purchasing one time in a month, and now they purchase two times in a month. Third, I'm adding this. So, by the time I can show the trajectory where it clearly tells me that at this stage, I will be profitable. At this stage, I'll start multifold profit. And this stage, I will get in that thing. If that is the case, then obviously it's a good business. And that means that uh, any good business would need continuous cash if it is on early stage. And, uh, and sometimes you have run out of all the options of raising that equity you know, through your internal accruals or from, uh, from your own sources. And you are not currently uh, also getting somebody to uh, participate as a minority shareholder. Then I think uh, it is always a good time to pass the baton to somebody who's more, more uh, in that thing and you need to proactively go there. But if the business is uh, struggling from other business issues, which looks very difficult to turn around, uh, then also there is a chance only and if, if somebody has a extremely big strategic uh, value, which comes in if forward integration, backward integration or something. So one has to really understand what is the definition of good business and where you are. But value is always there. Value in business is always there. I'll explain you again, this is called SaaS, uh, which means that what is the strategic value? It might be location, it might be, and I think I've, I've sold one factory, but somebody just bought a factory, not for anything else, because he had an order book. So another player had a big order book, and he, if he would have ordered the same machine from Italy, it would have taken six months to come, four, three, four months to run, and how do you would have service order? And one choice was that he outsourced to somebody. Second, he bought this business and not for anything else. He says just by buying the asset itself because asset itself was good. So strategic asset and subscriber value, which means that you might not have the first two, but you have a customer base, which is already there. So for that also people can buy. So you can have three of that, or you have two of it, or you have only one out of it. 
but still there is a value uh very well explained sir uh, the next question we have is as you said people acquire innovation but how do you value the technology of a company yeah so again it's a it's a, uh, a, a very tricky and a, a important question because uh, how much this technology would would benefit somebody is it a technology by itself or it would be a integrated part of it so which means that i am doing something and i needed this tool to be done but there is somebody who's already developed let me acquire and i my speed of doing it sometimes it is a technology in itself has become a potential to become a full product itself right so then the valuation would be different so it depends on where you are but there are many mechanisms uh, to really see the value uh, but most of the times it's more as that art and science this is not so much science it's going to be art how do you really uh, put that and that's why sometimes we hear some unrealistic sales of uh, early businesses being sold uh, uh, because there were disruptions you know and uh, and these disruptions was very clearly clearly seen by these large companies and said uh, they don't want to be losing on that and especially if you are in the in the space where you can shift like in social media facebook to buy it, uh, whatsapp was very clear that uh, if they would have not bought this uh, whatsapp would have been a bigger challenge for them so it's a it would have been it was it had a ability to socially connect and engage much more than any other medium so so they clearly saw that this is they there is no choice for them they would they would have put any dollar on the table to bought that uh, and piece of technology so that's where uh, most of the early stage uh, uh innovation happens so if any innovation really comes in uh, i feel that that's a value in build and if the pro if the pro got to the product stage which is commercially now already started making money then also is value and then when you become a complete mature business model and the whole balance sheet itself is a is a very strong asset uh another question sir that we have is are people still interested in buying businesses like restaurants schools etc which obviously have a great future ahead but currently not functioning much because of covid yeah so actually if you really ask me covid gives a great arbitrage for buying such businesses i mean i have a i have a buyer for a big preschool chain and they want to buy a preschool chain and almost every preschool is shut but they want to buy a good chain at this stage because they know it will come for a song uh, and uh, so actually if you really are intelligent uh, investor and somebody who has ability and spare cash i would say this is a good time to look at investment but uh, investment cycle should not be you should not be on a shopping list and do it all today i would place if somebody has say uh, some x money to invest i would say start your shopping spree from today and continue till the time the market recovers and market start coming back to boom continue to do it so if i was say i want to build a restaurant business i'm not would say maybe buy the first one restaurant in this quarter i'll pick up maybe next one in next quarter and next one next quarter and and slowly 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 i build a portfolio and continue to uh, build that and uh, so i will i will be passing through this whole cycle so buying and selling should uh, selling obviously doesn't give you that window so much but always buying you can plan it you can very well plan it and and do this like very clearly like stock market i never advise that just go and because the market is a down just pick it up keep picking up at a certain stages and and the theory of averaging out would really come through very well in this right uh, so i'll just take up the last question uh, for the day sir uh, this question is from jaya kumar uh, the question is we are a startup and working in the electric motorcycle space do you also help us uh, in finding a, a venture to raise funds yeah yeah absolutely very very keen rather we have a, a good investor available today from andhra andhra uh, somebody who who has interest to invest into uh, two wheeler electric mobility uh, and there's a lot going on in that there is a huge window which is opened in last uh, next 2 to 3 years uh, by that time the oems the big oems really start uh, coming and putting big push on the market so this window is only open for 2 years i would say uh, so it's a it's a great time for looking at it we obviously can help you yeah, in terms of finding out the right investor i don't know if you are an assembly line or you are a full oem manufacturing i don't know what you are in or you are just a trading company but depending on where you are one has to understand and then we can obviously advise you 
on on raising capital uh lastly sir i would just request you to also put your uh, email id or any contact details for anyone who would uh, want to reach out to you and know more about uh, uh, their yeah. personal user case if you want to reach out to me i'm putting my email id goromarya.com and please reach out to me and uh, i'll be more than happy to take your question or reach out to sonali uh, for anything which you want to do on business x uh, for for raising capital or uh, selling the business or even listing your business for sale uh, uh, sonali and team runs a uh, uh, you know full uh, full structure on businessx.com is the number one platform in india marketplace for selling your businesses you can you list yourself and the leads would come directly to you or on your crm so so when you can confidentially talk to them and do their transaction if you need more help and involve consultants like us are more than happy to do that and if you want to set up a call with us uh, reach out to me or sonali and we will be more than happy to come and have a call with you and we will we'll be able to tell you if we can help or we cannot help so thank you very much thanks for your time today thanks sonali for organizing this this is a, a 17th edition we have done so we 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 have 17 weeks we are coming and giving you learnings on investment scale value and exit uh, thank you very much thank you so much for your time gaurav sir as always it is uh, absolutely a pleasure to have you with us and uh, thank you for your time and for sharing uh, your valuable insights with us thank you very much thank you to all our attendees uh, we'll see you next saturday with another session uh, which will be all about investment so uh, I hope we'll see you there next Saturday at three o'clock. Thank you so much.